Inverse kinematic is a technique used to recover the full movement of a body based on the position of a single part. Nowadays we saw this technique applied in VR to replicate the body of the player inside the game. So in today's video I will show you how you can use this technique with the new animation rigging package from Unity to create a VR body in your game. The technique is free, works with any VR headset and any 3D character model. I'm Valem and this channel is all about VR development so if you want to learn more about VR go ahead and subscribe below but now let's get started with the tutorial. Ok so I'm here inside Unity, make sure that the version you are using is above 2019.2. Now in my scene I have here a plane which will be the ground and the 3D character robot guy which you can download for free on the asset store and this will be the character that we will use for our body. And on this project I will use the new animation rigging package that you can download by going in Windows, Package Manager, wait for all the package to appear show preview package and then select animation rigging and click on install. Ok now that it's downloaded, let's have a look at our 3D model. So if we inspect its children, you can see that a 3D character is divided in two parts, the mesh responsible for the look of the character and a rig which corresponds to the skeleton of our character and that we can use with animation. For example, I can go here and rotate the right arm to update the pose. But now here is the real problem. Imagine that I wanted to control the position of this end. If I move it, you can see that the rest of the body stays still. And this is what we will fix now. We will use inverse kinematic to make the rest of the arm match the position of our hand. And then we will be able to make the end follow our VR controller and have a full body. Ok so the first thing we want to do is go back to the game object parent root, robot Kyle. Now on this game object I will add a new component called rig builder. Now you can see that by adding this component, an animator has appeared on our character so we don't need the animation component anymore. Next I will create another component called Bone Renderer and as the name suggests, what this script does is display in a better way the bone structure of our character. So to use it, I will first lock the inspector windows here by clicking on the little icon on the top right. Then I will select all of my bones by pressing the shift key and drag them in the transform list of the bone renderer component. We can now unlock the inspector window and here we go you can see that now all of our bones are displayed nicely on top of our model. You can even customize the display like the color or the shape but in my case I will leave it to pyramid. Ok now that we have our rig displayed let's do the inverse kinematics and to do this we need to create some constraint on the rig. First, under the parent, I will create an empty game object called VR Constraints. On this game object, I will add a rig component and drag this game object in the rig list of the rig builder component on our robot. And this will link the constraint with the bones of our rig. Ok, next, I will create an empty child for the VR Constraint game object that I will rename Right Arms IK. And on this game object, I will add a new component called to bone IK constraint. And here we go, this will be the component responsible to move the full arms according to the position of our hands. So I will start by dragging the arms bones here in the constraint object transform. And to do this quickly, I will lock the inspector like we did earlier and click on the bone I want to access on the bone displayer. And here we go, now what's left to do is drag it in our script. So for the root, the right upper arm, for the mid, the right forearm, and for the tip, the wrist joint. And now, as you can see, the script needs two more variables, a target and a hint. To make them, I will create two more empty game objects as a child of VR constraint, one called target and the other hint. Now that they are both created, we can drag them in the two bone IK constraint component. Ok so now we want to position them correctly and for this the animation rigging comes with a handy tool. Select the target game object and then while holding the shift key select the bone where we want to position the target. And now I will go here on the animation rigging and click on align transform. And here we go, as you can see the target game object match the position of the hand bone. And we can do exactly the same for the hint by placing it on the right elbow. And in the case of the end game object, I want to move it a bit behind the elbow. 
The reason for this is that the hidden game object will show where the arm can fall. Perfect, now let's hit play to see what we've done. You can see how amazing this is. When I move the target game object, you can see that the whole arm is moving with the correct position. And I can now better showcase what the hidden game object does. So here if I move this game object, you can see that the arm change its fall according to its position. Okay, now I guess you see me coming with this one. Now that we've made it for the right arm, I will duplicate this game object, call it left arm IK, and do exactly the same, but in this case, with the left arm bones. And now we are done with the setup of both arms. Let's hit play to see what we've done. And here we go, now you can see that I can move both target and both arms are falling accordingly. At this stage, we could do the same for the legs and use the animation rigging to move them according to the position of the head, but it is a bit tricky and will make this video way too long. So let me know in the comment section below if you are interested in a part two where I will show you how to set up the legs. But now for the rest of this video, we will remove them and for this, we can go here in the rig and scale the hip to zero on the X and Y axis. Okay, now let's make the constraint on the head and this will be much easier. First, I will create another empty game object as a child of our VR constraint and rename it head constraint and add a new component called multi parent constraint. And what this component does is move the constraint game object as if it was a child of the source. So in our case, I will drag the head bone on the constraint object variable and set the source variable to be the head constraint. And here we go, now we can as always align the transform position of the head constraint to the end bone constraint and click on play to see what we've done. And now more than two ends, you can see that I can use the head constraint to rotate the head of the character too. But there is one last issue, as you can see when we rotate the head, the rest of the body stays still. And when the head moves, it doesn't move too, so let's fix this issue. To fix the problem, I will go back to the Robot Kyle game object and create a new script called VR Rig. So in this script, I will need two variables, a public transform variable for the head called head constraint, and another one, so a vector3 variable head body offset, which will be the initial difference in position between the head and the body, which I can calculate here in the start function by doing transform.position minus head constraint.position. And here we go now, if we want to move the body according to the head position, we can simply change the position of the game object in the update function with transform.position equals head constraint.position plus head body offset. Okay, so this word for the position. Now for the rotation, we can align the forward axis, which is the blue axis here on our character, with the up axis of the head of our player, which is the green one. And we can do this with transform.forward equals head constraint.up. But if we let this like this, the body will rotate on all axes. And in our case, we only want it to rotate on the Y axis. And to make it happen here, we can project on the horizontal plane the head constraint dot up by calling vector three dot project on plane head constraint dot up with vector three dot up and then normalize the vector with dot normalized. And here we go, we can now save our script. And if we go back to Unity, wait for the script to compile and click on play, you can see that if I move the head constraint, all the body is moving and is not stopping. Uh, so this is actually perfectly normal because we move the body with the head, but as the head is a child of the body, the head will follow it. And this actually happens in the same way with the rotation. I just love this effect. But in our case, we don't have to worry about this because we will always reposition the head and ends afterward to match the controller and headset of the player and this is what we will do now. So let's go back to our script. Okay, so to easily match the VR controller and headset to their target, I will create a new class next to this one called VR map. In this class, I will need four variables. One for the VR transform called VR target so that will be the headset or the controller and one for the rig call rig target. And to go with this, two more variables, which are not mandatory, but will be very useful, you will see. A public vector3 called tracking position offset 
and another vector 3 tracking rotation offset. Ok nice, now next step I will add a function in this class which will set the position and rotation of the rig target to be the VR target. And in this function I will set the rig target position to be VR target the transform direction with our position offset. And actually what the transform direction does is return the wall position that the rig target would have if it was a child of the VR target. And now for the rotation, we can simply call rig target dot rotation equals VR target dot rotation multiplied by quaternion dot Euler with the rotation offset variable. And here we go. Now what's left to do is use this new class in the VR rig function. So we can now create a three VR map variable, one for the head, one for the left hand, and one for the right hand. And now in the update function, we can call the map function on each of these variables so that their position will always match. Okay, now last but not least, I don't know if you are aware of this, but uh, if we were to go back to Unity and wait the script to compile, the VR map parameter will not show here. So to make them appear, we simply have to go back to our script and write system.serializable on top. And now here we go, we have correctly the parameter on our script showing. And basically that's it, we've now finished the setup and what's left to do is use the script with any VR SDK. So to showcase you this, I've downloaded in my product the Oculus SDK. So if I go here and drag it in my scene instead of the main camera that I can delete and also set the tracking type to floor so that it will use the height of the player. Now we can drag as the VR target of our head, the center I ensure for the VR target of the left hand, the left hand ensure, and finally for the VR target of the right hand, the right hand ensure. And here we go, now we can drag the head constraint left and right and target on our script too. Finally, let's click on play to see the beauty of what we've done. Okay, perfect. You can see that the mapping is working. The head and the hands are moving according to what I do with my controllers. However, you can see that some of the rotation is not correct. So this is where the rotation offset of our script comes handy. So for example, for the head, I will set the rotation offset to 0, minus 90, minus 90. Okay, now this looks way better. We can even reposition a bit better the camera position. So for example, I will move it in front of the eyes of Robot Kyle so that we cannot see the inside of the body when we look down. This seems much better like this and now we can do the same for the hands. So for example, I will set the rotation offset on the left hand to minus 90, 90, 0 and the offset of the right hand to 90, minus 90, 0. And now everything seems nice. And here you go, now we have a nice working VR body for our player. Obviously there is a lot of room for improvement here. For example, you can see that the arm of Robot Kyle are a bit short and doesn't go all the way up when I reach out my arms. So we can simply scale up the size of Robot Kyle for fixing this issue. Also, instead of rotating the body directly to the head, we can put a little delay by using Vector3.lerp in our script when we rotate the body. And here you go, you can see that this feels already more natural. So now is your turn to use this tutorial as the foundation of your VR body. I strongly recommend for you to go into the simple example of the animation rigging package that you can use to better twist your arm for example, or even for the spine of the character and obviously to finish the body with the legs. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. As always, you know how it goes. If you do, you can leave a like below and subscribe to the channel. And a big shout out to my Patreon from last week. Their name will appear at the top right corner of the screen. And if like them, you want to have access to exclusive tutorial and the source code of all my projects, go check it out. The link is in the description below. Bye bye and see you in the next one.